What up, what up, world? This is Decent back again with another Pop Dust exclusive. And my guest at this time just released her latest single, Here For Ya. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the lovely, the talented, the Bronx native, Kim Biera. What's up? <laughs> Kim, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me. So tell us about the new single. Yes, here for ya. So I did that record with uh, my boy Jay White. Did it. He does Banger. a lot of stuff for Cardi B, Azalea, everybody, you name it. He's done it. And uh, my boy Prince Charles. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So you kind of kind of snuck a little sample in there. Yes, I did. Ghost Town DJs. And mm -mm. what inspired you to kind of take this song and like, you know, give it your own little twist? Was it the actual beat itself? So this record, um, Jay White had brought to me and he was like, yo, I want to play you some stuff. See if like you feeling anything, you inspired by anything. I got some new, new fire. So I was like, all right, let me see. So he had played me one, and this was one of the records that he played. And when I heard it, I was like, yo, I need this record. And the reason why is because I love records that people, every day, people can just relate to. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's important that as artists, we have music that people can connect to and they can listen to when they're feeling some type of way. Awesome. And you also released two versions of the song. I did, and in Spanglish, and my boy Randy Class helped me with that one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're in a climate right now where no matter what you subscribe to, representation is important now more than ever. Yeah. So how important is that representation for you? Oh, it's huge. I mean, I think that it's important that you have somebody to look up to. I mean, when I was growing up, I looked at different artists and connected with different artists that I felt like look like me or I can relate to their story. And I want to be that for, you know, young girls out there or even young boys who feel like, yo, I could relate to that story because I feel like that's that's similar to mine, you know? And if she can do it, I can do it. And I think that there's nothing better than to inspire. Awesome, awesome. So, Puerto Rican descent. Yeah. You're from the Bronx. Right. Do you get those comparisons? And if you do, you know, comparisons. J-Lo? Yeah. Do you get them and how do you handle them? <laughs> I know personally, you know, as yeah. an artist, you know, in some regards it's flattering to hear that you're compared to somebody who's iconic and a big star in their own right. But yeah. It could be a little frustrating if that's all people see. So yeah. with those comparisons, how are you handling it? Honestly, I, I take that more as a compliment than anything because, I mean, she she paved the way for us. You know what I'm saying? I always pay homage to the people who came before me. And, you know, she comes from the same town as me. And, like, that's something great. She's the queen of what she does. And uh, I love J-Lo. So, I mean, I, I, I take that as a compliment. Shout yeah. out to J-Lo. Yeah, shout out to J-Lo. Jenny from the block. Outside of, you know, music and growing up in a musical household, what was it like for you growing up in the Bronx? I imagine, you know, being inspired to be a singer, you know, you kind of have a different perspective of the environment that you're in outside mm -hmm. of just being a regular person. So what was it like, you know, day to day, you growing up and you kind of finding this passion and honing your talent? I grew up in my own world, to be honest. I, I was very much, I had a huge imagination as a kid. And so for me, my, my parents always had music playing at home. We always had a very creative household. Like, there was always something going on, whether I had friends over or family over, the house was always packed, you know, there was always parties, there was always something going on. And, you know, when I wasn't doing anything, I would spend hours in my room listening to music. I would spend hours in my room creating my own concerts, doing my own little, playing my own little games and doing my own thing. And, you know, that's really where, you know, I started to flourish as an entertainer, I think, as a child, was because I, I created this world that I thought could be my own that I saw all these other stars that I looked up to and that's basically what I did as a kid I played for hours by myself and you know my brothers too because I'm like the youngest of four so and I have all brothers so you know part of my time was being tortured by them you know <laughs> that, that was fun <laughs> so you said you have brothers you're the youngest yeah how did they play a part in you know your <laughs> musical journey you know were oh, yeah. you would they be the type where you're making up songs, you know, they would just like run in a room and, you know, cause havoc and make fun of you? Did, did they support you eventually oh, yeah. after doing all that? Like, what was it like being the youngest and having just a whole bunch of boys ruin and consume your life at a young age? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's like, well, you know, they had a little bit of a balance. So like sometimes one of my, my brother right before me, 
Danny, shout out to you. He's my tormentor when I was a child, but I love him so much. Uh, he he would come in and just be like, uh, and like come in with, he, he'd, he'd put on like dress up clothes and try and like ruin my little videos and stuff and like piss me off. And I would be like, no, you ruined it. And I would get so mad. But then as I got older, like, it, the, the roles kind of switched like my brothers definitely became like more of my supporters you know um one of my oldest Mount, i've worked with all my brothers in my career to be honest really one of them is my trainer the other one is my manager the other one helps me with my live shows so they're all part of my career now and i'm there i mean i've always kind of been their princess you know that's how they've always seen me as their baby you know, so as I've gotten older, they've played a huge role in my career. And, you know, to get me where I'm at, they've done everything they possibly could to help me. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It seems like family has been like a very, very integral part of not just, you know, your career, but yeah. your life as well. You know, absolutely. Is there ever a point in time where it's kind of hard to separate the two, though? Because you come from a musical family. and I'm pretty sure, you know, as musicians, we're just inclined to want to give feedback. So I'm pretty sure your parents want to chime in on certain songs oh and I'm pretty gosh, sure your yeah. brothers have input on things like that so how do you go ah let me do me how do you do yeah. how you balance that with your I family? mean that's that's taken a while to get there because I think also in a Latin family like they don't understand the difference between <laughs> family not being involved and you know it's just very um all for one you know and so mentality so they all have opinions you know mm -hmm. we've all we fight it out sometimes you know if I feel really strongly about something I'm like I'm sorry you feel that way but I know what I'm gonna do you know but for the most part I try to get on the same page with them you know because I want them to be proud of me at the end of the day I want them to get behind whatever I do but Absolutely. we don't always agree so you know sometimes I, I take one for the team and I'm like all right gotta I gotta do what's right for Kim sometimes you know and who better to disagree with than family yeah at the end of the day because they're still going to love me at the end of the day. But exactly. Yeah, love each other. You can fire your manager, but you can't fire yeah. your mom. So tell us a little bit about the experience of performing. Yeah. Because from what I see, you're a very, very lively, very active, very engaging performer. How does that come about? What's the preparation that goes into that outside of, you know, you being a kid in your room, you know, now that you're on the main stage, so to speak, what's that whole ordeal like for you? If I get enough notice with the shows, I try to always make sure that I put in as much rehearsal as I can, just so I feel like, you know, super prepared so that if this goes wrong or that goes wrong, at least I'm good. You know, right. what I, mean? I feel good about my performance. I know that I expect anything to happen at shows. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you can't control everything. Yeah. Some things are going to go wrong and you're just going to have to expect that. And for me, I just try to do the best that I can and take it a day at a time. You know, some, there's some shows that I feel like I, I kill, and then some shows that I feel like, dang, I could have done better, and I know that I wasn't at my best today. And then other people are like, what are you talking about? But I am like my worst critic because I know what I'm capable of. Yeah. So I always just try to, you know, prepare and make sure that I'm at my best, and that at least I know, okay, Kim, you put, you put your best out there, and maybe you didn't have it all together today, but next time you're gonna do better. So yeah. I always try to grow from it. Get ready, you know. Stay ready. Yeah. You know, stay prepared. All the time. That's right. You got to stay ready. Mark of stay a true ready. performer and a true professional. <laughs> what is on the horizon for you? I know you've been talking about new music, you know, the singles out right now, but we want a project, man. Yeah. It's been, it's been a while. I feel like. Yes. I know these things take time and you can't rush greatness. You yes. know, yada, yada, yada. But I'm just saying it's 2019. Well, it's about to be nice. We need some tunes. I have an EP that's going to be dropping very, very soon. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give you guys an exact date yet because we're, you know, but big, soon. finagling that. But very soon. Very soon. This year you will have it, I promise you. So, yeah, I have that coming out. I have one more single that I'm going to be dropping soon. So, you guys will have more content from me. And where can they find you at on social media? At Kim Vieira on Instagram, Twitter at Kim Vieira, and Facebook at Kim Vieira. So. Pretty simple. Straight very, to the point. Very, very simple. Straight to the point. <laughs> yeah. That's how we get down in the boogie down. That's right. Well, yeah. Kim, <laughs> Kim, thank you so much for stopping by. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kim Vieira. Here for you is out now on all download and streaming yeah. platforms. I am decent. This has been another Pop Dust exclusive. Make sure you visit our website at popdust.com. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Pop Dust. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do us a little favor. Click the bell to be notified of brand new content. And we will see you soon. Peace. Thanks.